Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thank you for joining me today. Today is a fun little video on um, bubble paper, grungy bubble paper, which I really have been having a lot of fun making. So these are our, um, just layers of paints. And uh, this first one that I did, which I'm gonna recreate now, maybe not exactly the same, but uh, we have some texture in it too, which I really like. And we're gonna paint these little bubbles and you'll be surprised how quick and easy you can paint these. So uh, let's get started. I think they make really cute little um, papers and things to add to journals. So here is a, a part of this paper that I ripped up underneath and you can see the grunginess underneath and uh, adding more textiles to it. Here's another piece of the grungy paper. And I just think it's really fun when you can create your own papers and then manipulate them in different ways to make them cohesive throughout a journal, which is really fun, in my opinion anyways. So here's some other samples. So this one was the first one I did and uh, I was really playing with the grunginess, again, sticking down different papers. And uh, then I drew some uh, little plants in there and painted those out for fun. Here's some really grungy ones with splatters. And then I thought, I really like bubbles. Let's put some bubbles in. And of course you can do any color combination you like. Uh, this has got um, inks in it and uh, it just got really grungy. So I just experimented and had fun. I love this little effect here. Again, that's with um, distressed oxide, I believe which of course reacts to water differently than ink. So let's let's have some fun creating our papers. So the first thing I like to do is I, I use scraps. So all my scraps here, I just pull out whatever I can get my hands on and I'm just going to randomly glue those down in places. Now this is kind of a, a way to use up scraps, but it's also a fun way to create some textures on your paper. So you'll see I'm not worrying about gluing the papers down perfectly because my plan is to pull these back off. And you're thinking, why would you glue them down just to pull them back off? Well, once, this, once the glue is adhered and parts of the paper have stuck, it pulls and leaves a texture behind, which is really nice and fun to, uh, to keep. So, Oh, I can hear the puppy coming. She is brand new. I will show you a little clip of her, but she's uh, she might hear her in the background causing trouble. I'll probably have to pause the video in between because she loves to steal my paper and chew it. <laughs> I'll share uh, our newest addition to the Sharp family. Her name is Millie. She's adorable, but I've forgotten how much work puppies are. And... Uh, how distracting they are because they're so cute. I don't get any work done. So uh, here's uh, what I do to create these papers. And, oh, I can hear my son coming to get her now. Hang on a sec. This is Millie, the newest addition. Where are you going? Come here, come here and look. She's already into my papers. Look, what have you got? What have you got? Is that a paper? Thank you, you can't eat that. Oh, you're gonna be a big distraction. You can't have it. Thank you. Say bye bye. Okay. So here's one I did uh, probably just be just before I started the video filming here, so we can I can show you the technique. So what I do is I just start pulling off the paper, depending how much glue you've applied and the type of paper you're using. There will you'll it will leave behind sections of paper. So, and again, it also depends on how long you let the glue dry, the quality of glue you're using. But I really love this messy look. I, lo I love these ripped, torn edges underneath. So I'm just gonna do this and we'll paint on this one. How about that? Just pull it off. So you see these kind of transparent little bits it leaves. And then there's of course the texture to it. That, that makes me happy. <laughs> So you can see the glue has mostly dried. I'm just gonna tear this up a bit. Even if some are peeling up, it doesn't bother me. Again, it's just more texture. Okay, so there we go. Maybe a little bit more off this guy. There we go. So it just leaves these random patches of paper behind. 
and when you're when you're cutting these down to size for things like tags or pages or whatever it is you're deciding to use it for it uh, it just adds a little bit more texture and interest so the next thing I want to do is I want to slap some paint down so I have taken out um, my acrylic here and this one is called uh, Naples yellow so it's a very off it's basically an off-white and I have some cheapy uh, black paint here and then I'm going to use my distressed oxide which is vintage photo and then I found this one as well which is walnut stain so we'll use these up as well uh, I just put it out on a spare piece of paper because again it can grunge that paper up I'm going to use a cheap dollar store brush like this and I'm just gonna slap the painter paint down. But what I love about this kind of technique is it's quick, it's messy, it's fun. I don't overthink it, I just go for it. I like to uh, make the paper maybe a little wet. Let's see what that does. Um, again, use whatever paper you have. This is a bit of a thicker cardstock. Than the uh, original one I showed you a second ago in the book. That one was done on very thin paper. So again, I'm just using up what I have. So now I might spray a little bit of ink on here. I like to spray it on here first because I don't like the pattern of the spray going directly on my paper. And oxide will evaporate very quickly. So once I've got this color in, maybe I'll spray a little bit and move it quick, just so I have a solid color. So you can see very grungy, very messy. You can leave it splattered like this. You can do whatever it is that suits your fancy. And you can see the, the fun effect that that leftover paper has behind. Which, and it will probably even show up more once the, um, the uh, paint has dried. So again, just rubbing colors. Might go a little bit more dramatic on the edges with the black. The messier, the better. That's why this project is so fun. Because this is where you can really let loose and let your kids do it even, you know? Here, make me some messy paper. <laughs> I would make my kids do it, but they're too old now and they're not interested. Oh, just scrubbing this in. Sorry, I don't know if I'm in view or not. And then I use a, a very dry brush, so you see there's very little pigment on there. And I'll just scrub. If it grabs the paper, awesome. Kind of leaves this really neat texture behind. So if I push hard, I might be able to peel up even more paper, create more ridges. Very grungy, loving it. So this isn't for everyone, I know. Some of you will think that's some ugly paper and <laughs> that's okay. But you could also do this in pinks and purples and you know, if you're doing a butterfly kind of journal or flowers and you like your journals very colorful, that's your signature look. Uh, you can still use this technique just with brighter colors and you don't get that like that dirty or grungy look. You just get the colors that you like. I would still introduce a black and white into the pinks and purples just so you have a range of tone and values and then really just have fun playing with it you can go very opaque in some places you know doesn't have to be all consistent just a little mini abstract work here and really kind of pop those papers that got left behind. Okay, I'm just gonna wipe some of that off so it has time to dry and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we're dry enough now to proceed. I'm just gonna have a sip of coffee actually. I didn't get much sleep with that puppy. <laughs> so here is a uh, my illegible stamp and you'll see I use this quite a lot during uh, making videos. I'm going to use some slate gray here and I just like to add another layer of texture. It's all about texture and just going to throw this in random 
and just create some interest so that if we decide to cut this page up, we have a little bit of this texture throughout. Or you can leave this and decorate it with a vivid picture on the front. There's, you know, there's so much you can do with these kinds of grungy looks. Um, I did forget to do one thing, which was I like to add a splatter to my paper. And I just thought of it now. So I'm just going to water down some black paint and let's splatter it. So we'll let that dry a second while I talk about uh, circles. So these uh, I used to create bubble sizes. So you don't have to draw a circle because drawing a circle isn't very easy. You can trace something. But what I like to do is I just paint the rim with the paint and then dunk it. So let's try one. I'm going to try this size. Back to uh, maybe a little bit of a smaller brush. And let's go with a little bit of black here. And I'm just going to paint the ridge, not too much paint, and slap it down. And there's my bubble. And then we're going to elaborate that bubble. So these are acrylic paints and they dry pretty quick. So I'm going to do two. And then I'm going to grab my brush here, which is a soft bristle. It's actually a watercolor brush. And I'm just going to take a little bit of water and I'm going to slowly dilute that on. I'm going to move this because I'm going to put my hand in all these black little wet spots. And I'm just going to slowly dilute the edge, which creates that kind of soapy look of the bubble. So if you're worried about your hand not keeping a straight edge like here, it goes out a little bit, just work with it because when bubbles are moving through the air, they um, are distorted. They don't stay a perfect round shape. So don't stress over it being perfect. So all I do is I dilute that edge so it's not quite so harsh. And it creates that illusion of um, a bubbly, soapy bubble. So again, you want to work while the paint is wet and dilute. And I'll let that dry a little bit while I move to another bubble. And then maybe we'll do this size. So let's put some white paint on this one. And you saw the blue and green bubbly paper before. So again, you can introduce color here. Green paint, blue paint, whatever you want. And I'm just going to, there's a little bit of blue on this actually. So now I'm going to go into my water, clean my brush a little bit and dilute that so that's not showing very much. So we'll add a little bit more paint. So you get to play with the contrast of the background of the paper and the foreground here. So I'll go white here so that we can see the bubble a little bit more. And then once this is, when I've got some white on my brush, I like to give the bubble a little bit of a reflection. It's grabbing the light. I try to stay consistent and make sure it's reflecting all the same direction. And that's the beauty about acrylic. So if you overshoot it, just keep playing with it till you get a look you're happy with. And it, it's just so much fun to create. So this bubble, I think I want to do a little bit more of an outline on that one. I don't find it's really showing up much. So this time I'm going to go back to black. And I'm going to just redo that one a little bit. And soften it out. So the secret is just working while that outline is wet. And it's fun to try it on uh, some separate papers as well because different papers will absorb water differently and uh, create different different um, looking bubbles. Let's maybe try a big one. Let's do black again. I'm just going to paint the edge of this round lid. You use any size you want. Different sizes inside the same paper is really fun as well. And let's put this one right here. I'm gonna clean my brush, dry it off a little bit, and just soften that out. So what's nice is that acrylic paint underneath does stop the uh, paint from absorbing super fast so that you have time to do this. So if you're using 
um, watercolor paper, for example, this would dry very quickly unless you're using lots of water. But when you use the acrylic paint underneath, it gives you a little bit more flexibility for time. I'll add a little bit of black in my brush. Really soften the edge. Pull it into the circle. And what this visually does is separates the background to this bubble foreground. And it's a super simple, easy, fun technique to use. And dip in the white, put my reflection back in. And go bold on the reflection if you want. And there we go. And you can really have fun with reflections. You can go all out on reflections, just have fun with it. You can even put a reflection on the other end of the bubble, like the white, the light's coming right through. Really pop that bubble forward. Depends how much detail you want to put into your paper. But the grunginess of this paper, to me, really pops the bubbles. I just love that all the elements together really make me happy. <laughs> let's do another big one. Uh, let's do, make, let's try a white one over here. See if it will work. It's probably going to go gray because I think this black is still pretty wet on my lid here. But that's the beauty of grunge. You don't have to worry about it. Just paint that lid, pop it down. Yeah, we're going to have to go black. It's not going to show. And you can put bubbles over top of bubbles. Oh, bubbles just make you happy. <laughs> All right, maybe I'm a little weird. I don't know. Bubbles make me happy. All right. Let's, I'm going to grab a little bit of black because this did not print on this side. So we'll fill it in visually. And again, don't worry about keeping your brush stroke perfect because, like I said, bubbles get distorted as they float through the air. They don't stay perfect circles. They wiggle. And wipe a little bit off. Make that a little bit more round. So this one's changed a little bit green because it's grabbed that dirty green in there. So if you want to get rid of the green, you can just pop a little bit of black. Just, just tone it down. There we go. And then let's do our highlight. Highlight right here. Another little highlight here. Nice one here. And again, I can put another thin highlight underneath just so it looks like it's reflecting the light right through. Don't want too much. Soften this a little bit. You're really just having fun playing. So much fun. So there's another bubble. So we could put this size over top of that one just for fun. And then you can use up this paper however you like. So a bubble on top of a bubble. Soften this again. And then what's nice about the bubble on top of the bubble is even if this dries, it's okay because bubbles are translucent, transparent. And uh, you would see the circle of the other bubble behind it. There you go. So have fun with it. And there's your bubble paper. You just keep going and going till your heart's content. And like I said, you can use other colors. So there's uh, I, uh, this one. I think I used the green. I just sprayed some of this luminous spray on uh, the paper throughout and then decided to add the green bubbles on it. You don't have to use ink, you can just use paper, but I happen to like the color of the distressed oxides. And I like the way they um, they kind of react to water differently, This so that creates some really interesting effects. You do this on top of watercolor paper too with that other technique we've done. I wanted to show you quick too, um, this is dry now. 
So I'm going to see if my pen still works. So on the grungy paper, you can also do um, sketches on it. I'm just going to do a real quick one here. And what I like to do again is pull the the background away from the foreground. So this is kind of neat how it looks as well, but you can take it up a notch by adding paint on top again. Now what's nice about these inks is the ink underneath will absorb into the paint over time pretty quickly, but as the paint's drying, it will start changing color. So if you put this color right over top of the, the distressed oxide, the distressed, distressed oxide is gonna slowly penetrate through that paint. When the acrylics colors won't, those, this paint will sit right on top. So you can create some really fun effects doing that, really playing with inks. Um, distressed oxide, like I said, is different than ink, so you really have to play with it. It's, you know, get to know its nature. So there you go. You can see how it really pops from the background. You can even add a little bit of black to your brush and create, change the background a little and make that pop out even more by adding a contrast behind it. So I'm using very little paint here because I don't want to cover up all the work I've done. I just want to add another layer, almost like a wash, like a veil really. And then I just pop that in. Maybe just put a little shadow here if you really want to make it 3D. Decide which way the light's coming and add a bit of a shadow around the parts that would be lifted. And I'm using a really junky paintbrush here. I'm not using any nice paintbrushes for this. Just gonna soften that. A little bit of a shadow here, maybe here, and in here. just for fun, really pops it. We could even add a little bit more ink over top, blend that warmth back in. They just have fun with your, your paints. And then when this is dry, which it is not, I would take my pen, I don't wanna do it because it's gonna ruin my pen, but I would just draw details back in the plants. Did I do it in the originals? Yeah, so I just re-sketch some black lines back in. So lots of fun. You really, really have fun with the, tearing these papers um, and creating layers of texture of grunge. So ink, paint, papers, uh, splashes, and of course our fun little bubbles. Who doesn't love bubbles? So now that this is dry or drier, I would probably hit it again one more time with a highlight. Not a highlight, but reflection. The light is reflecting on these bubbles. Just fun, right? And then you can use them up any way you like. So like I showed you before, I just add them, cut them up. I'll take the grungy paper and then the bubbles that I like, I'll keep as journal paper. And maybe we'll do these next. These are pretty fun to make and they just add a little element to your journal. I did this guy. Um, with stamping. We'll maybe do him next as well. So I hope that gave you some fun ideas. I hope it, it, it takes the stress away about doing something like three-dimensional like a bubble and, and realizing they're quite easy. It's really all about illusion. Now this paper, because I stamped in white, I went back with a blank pen and outlined some of the bubbles to help pop them forward. So I did that in this one as well. Uh, in this one, I don't need to because we use black paint. So the bubble stands off and out of the um, the background. You could take it at a level, another level further and actually cut the bubble back out and cover it with like a foam underneath and then stick it on a paper. So you take this and put some foam underneath and stick it up so the bubble really is raised up against the background. That could be a lot of fun. Um, but there's some ideas to play with some grunge paper and uh, you just, again, using up some scraps here and creating your very own bubble paper. So I hope you like that. I hope it gave you some ideas and uh, leave me some comments on what you would like to see in the future on this channel. It's very helpful when I know what you guys want to see. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.